Okay, today I'm going to walk you through two methods to turn a daytime photo into a nighttime photo with Photoshop and Nick plugins. Method number one will be Nick color effects and a little added bonus with Luminar. Method two is going to be done entirely within Photoshop. Now I've separated this video into chapters for your convenience, so you can reference one or both methods again in the future. Let's go have some fun. All right, I've opened an image in Lightroom Classic to work with. Now, a little note about what images do well with this technique. I try images that are taken in overcast light or just have very low contrast. If they happen to have a light source like this lamp right here, great, but it's no big deal if it doesn't because we're gonna be making use of selections in the Photoshop portion of this video to create our own source of bright light for the glow effect. So stay tuned for that. Now you can go directly into Nick, any of the Nick products directly from Lightroom Classic and work on them non-destructively as a TIFF file. You can also open images directly into the Nick suite from your hard drive. I like to launch most plugins uh, from Photoshop because I like working with layers, but that's just my normal workflow. You guys do what you are comfortable with. If things become too difficult, it's not nearly as much fun, right? So let's keep it fun. All right, in Photoshop, I'm going to use the Nick 7 palette. So if you don't see this, you can bring it up under, you go to File, Automate, and Nick Collection 7 palette. And that way you can have all these plugins available. And I like to kind of minimize that panel just to, to keep the icons visible and it, it's a little, little less clutter. All right, let's click on the color effects icon. And it automatically puts the plugin into its own layer, which I prefer, and I'll show you why here soon. Now, all you need in here is three filters, and they are oh so conveniently placed right next to each other. So we're going to start with low key. And then I'm going to add Monday morning and then midnight. Now you're gonna get different results if you do this in a different order, if you add midnight first and then Monday morning and then low key. So some images will benefit from doing these in the different order. So definitely feel free to experiment and not follow this word for word. Now don't freak out about how this looks. This is what all of the sliders are for. We will fix this. All right, low key adds a little bit of glow that we might not need that much of. So I'm gonna tone that down. I'm lowering smear in the Monday morning filter as well as the blur of the midnight filter because I, I just don't want this to be as soft as these filters made it look. So lowering the opacity of the midnight filter also makes a really big difference here. And you can do the same with the Monday morning. All right, so here's a little before and after. Okay, now we're okay to stop here, but I'd like to make this look a little bit more like it was taken under moonlight while still maintaining a bit of the warmth from this lamp here. So I do want to kind of add a little bit of a blue hue. Midnight and Monday morning both have a color set drop down that you can play with. And you can cycle through them to pick the one that you like. I'm going to go with uh, blue on the midnight filter. And I'm also going to choose blue on the Monday morning filter. And then I'm going to adjust the shadows and highlights and the opacity just to taste. And this is going to change from image to image. By the way, if you're new to Nick, I have a link in the description where you can download the entire suite. And I'll also link my full tutorial on Nick 7 color effects in the description, as well as the at the end of this video, which it's about 30, 35 minutes long. It's very helpful. It walks you through this whole program. All right, here's a little before and after. Pretty nifty. But we're going to do one more thing. And we're going to light up that lamp. I'm going to need another program to do that. Okay, so just briefly, this is one of the reasons why I like layers for plugins like this. The ability to take advantage of a layer mask to remove the effect from areas where it is either too strong or I just don't like it and I, I want to be able to see what's behind it. This type of thing comes in extremely useful when I do some of my painterly techniques on my images where I want to maintain the reality of 
a, a human's smile or an animal's eyes or something like that. Layers come in very handy for that. All right. So now I'm going to invoke another plugin and I want it to be on its own layer. I can't use a blank layer with this uh, plugin, so I'm going to have to duplicate one of my layers. So I'm going to duplicate my color effects layer by dragging it to the new layer icon at the bottom. Now I can go to Filter, Skylum Software, Luminar Neo. I will also have a link to Luminar in the description as well. This software is so much fun for creativity. And I recommend it to a lot of newbies who are just not fond of Photoshop or just don't want to learn all of this because it's very complicated. Luminar is, it's much more intuitive, especially for, for new people. All right, I'm going to open up the Edit tab. Now, some of these may be collapsed, so just open up Landscapes, and I'm going to go to Sunrays. Crank up the amount to see the effect. Any highlight will do. If it sees any highlight in here, it's going to target it. And you see how it automatically found my source of light and just added rays from it. If it picks the wrong source because you have another bright area, just click the Place Sun Center wherever you want it. You can drag that around. It truly is amazing how it, it recognizes the darker areas that should actually be in shadow, as if the light is literally coming from behind something. I don't understand it. I just like it. All right, so go ahead and move that light source around until you're happy with the positioning of it. And then just start messing with the sliders. You can change the length of the rays, the glow radius, so basically how far out the glow extends, the glow amount, it's pretty much the intensity of the glow. The number of rays. Or you can just kind of roll the dice and drag the randomized slider. Below that, you can open up the warmth and you can warm the sun or the source of light and the rays themselves. And once you're done, just click apply. All right, now I have my original, the Nick night effect in one layer, and I turned on the lights on that lamp in the next layer with Luminar. Okay, just one more filter I want to show you within Luminar, and I'm actually going to turn that layer off and we're going to open this layer up again because I want to show you the, the difference between these two. So I'm going to go back to Filter, Skylum, Luminar Neo. So last time we used the sunlight which targeted the bright light source. This one we are going to try something a little different. And it's under the Creative tab, so if you don't have that open, just open that up, and it's Magic Light, which is truly magic. So you're not really going to see anything until you crank up the intensity. So let's... boom. If it doesn't automatically see something, you're going to want to put... Uh, or just paint in here. So you're going to add... click on Add and increase or decrease the brush size. And just kind of bring it in here. There you go. All right, so that's the intensity. So you've created a light source there. So you can change the size. So this creates a really nice glow with some pretty fall off. You can change the width of the beam. So if you want it to look like starlight, <laughs> you can do that. Widen them out and increase or decrease the glow. Make it very clear or just a little bit smoother. Change that overall brightness. Again, the number of beams. So here is before and after of doing that one. And again, you can mask this out if you want to do uh, object selection. Right, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here. I just wanted to show you what this is capable of doing. I might do a, a separate loop tutorial that goes into a little bit more depth here. So I'm going to click apply and wait patiently. So now I can decide whether I like this beam of light or this beam of light. Or I can come up here and change the blending mode and combine them both, which that really looks weird. Anyway, experimentation uh, will lead you to some fun results here. So have fun with that. When you are all finished, just make sure that you are saving that as a TIFF or a PSD to keep those layers intact for future use. Alrighty then, method number two. This one we're not going to use any plugins, we're just going to do this all within Photoshop. 
So I'm starting from the same exact original image so that we can, you know, compare apples to apples here with the two different uh, methods. So first we want to create the night effect and then we'll create the glow effect and we'll keep everything organized with layers and groups. So add a new adjustment layer so we can do that from the layers panel or we can go up to the top menu and say layer, new adjustment layer and color lookup. I'll do it from the bottom and from the 3D LUT drop down, you're going to select either moonlight or night from day. Now they look very different, but they both accomplish essentially the same thing. They will darken the heck out of this image. Now I'm going to choose night from day. It's just not quite as, as blue as the moonlight. I think the moonlight's a little, little overkill with the blue. But even still, even with the night from day, I'm going to add an HSL layer to increase or decrease the saturation of the blues, the cyans, the overall master colors, just to taste. Now this effect does in fact dull the image quite a bit, so I'm going to add some contrast back with either levels or curves or brightness contrast. Any one of these will do, so whichever one you want to use, go ahead and use that. Now to keep this organized, I want to shift select all of these layers and then hit command or control G to group them. Double click on that layer in order to rename it for future reference. So click on the background layer because now we're going to do the glow process. The night process was really easy. So now we're going to do the glow process. So make a selection. Now you can use whatever selection tool you are most comfortable with. I'm going to use the quick selection tool to select the lamp area. And I'm going to hold the shift key to add more or be more selective about it. You can hold the alt or option key to remove areas if it's kind of grabbed too much. And sometimes zooming in and using a smaller brush with this will help make it more precise. All right, so make sure the background layer is selected and hit Command or Control on a PC J to put that selection on its own layer. And we're going to right click and convert it to a smart object. Command or Control G to again start a new group with this layer because we're going to want the entire glow effect all accessible with uh, one click of a button. And double click it to rename it so we know that it is the glow effect. All right, select that layer and go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to take the radius down to, you know, five or six pixels, whatever looks good on your image. If you have a different resolution than I have here, it, it may require 10 pixels or just two pixels, whatever you think looks good. And then click OK. I'm going to come down to that layer and I'm going to change the blend mode to Linear Dodge or Add. And you can immediately see that it just brightened that whole selection that I just made. And I'm going to select that layer and hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. And this is going to duplicate all those steps that we just took. So it's already going to be a smart object and it will already have a five to six or however many you made pixel Gaussian blur on it. So double click the Gaussian blur in that new layer and change it this time to 100, 150, somewhere in there, whatever looks good. You're just wanting to add more bright blurriness. And then we're going to do it again. Command or Control J and double click on that Gaussian blur. And this time change it to 400 or 600. Again, different images are going to require different amounts. And it's up to your taste as well. We can stop here or you can do it again. Now our entire glow effect is in that group and you can turn the whole thing on or off to turn the lights on and off. So let's see the before and after. Pretty cool. So here's the color effects and luminar version. And here's the Photoshop only version. Very different looks, but each accomplishing the same thing by turning day into night. If you'd like to watch a full tutorial on Nick Color Effects, click on this video right here. And for a full playlist on Nick, click on this link right here. Y'all have a great day.